So in lesson 7.5, we're going to be working with equations that have variables on both sides of the equation. Okay? And we know what our goal is. We know the goal is to get the variable by itself. So it says x equals a number or whatever. y equals a number. n equals a number. But in order to do that, you have to get the variable terms on one side and the numerical terms on the other side. So if you have variable terms on both sides, you're going to have to get rid of them on one side. If you have numbers on both sides, which we've had before, you're going to add the opposite of those numbers to get them off of the side of the variable term. So that you've got variable terms on one side, numerical terms on the other side, and then you can multiply or divide to solve it. Okay? So, I, uh, you wrote down this procedure in your notes. In order to get rid of something on one side of the equation, in order to completely remove it or make it zero, you have to add its opposite. If you add its opposite, no matter what kind of term it is, the answer is zero. So if you have 2x and you have to get rid of 2x's, you add negative 2x and you get zero. If you have, in this case, we have 9a's on the left side, and we have 4a's on the right side. If you want to get rid of the 4a's on the right side, then you'd add negative 4a's. Because that equals 0. And now you've removed those 4a's from the right side. But you also have to follow the cardinal rule of solving equations, the cardinal rule, the most important rule, is that whatever you do to one side of the equation, you have to do to the other side. In order for the equation to stay balanced. You can't just do something on one side and not do that on the other side. Okay? So if you add negative 4a to this side to get rid of those 4a's, then you have to add negative 4a to the left side, and then whatever results is what's left. 5a's. So now, in this equation, you have 5a's plus 2 on the left side, and 0 plus negative 18 on the right side. Then, we need to get the numerical terms all on one side. So add negative 2. Now we have 5a equals what? 5a equals, Danny? Negative 20. Negative 20, right. And now you can find a. You've got the variable terms on the left side, and you've got the numerical terms on the right side. So multiply and divide. Divide everything by 5, a equals negative 4. Any questions on this one? Maya? Um, you don't, it's not like the bigger problem that you have a plus zero. Right, 5a plus zero is 5a. Yep. So I could write it here. And then write 5a. And that equals negative 20. Yeah. Okay, go to your book. We're going to do some practice problems from lesson 7-5. Question, do you have a mic? Yes. Okay. Um, so follow along. Open your books to page 373. We're going to start with number 3. So, number three, this is part of your assignment. So, 
Take out your assignment book. And let's get started. 3y minus 20 equals 8y. So, again, we've got variable terms on both sides. We have to get rid of them on one side. Now, this is the cool part of solving equations. It's kind of like uh, playing a game. There's more than one way to play the game as long as you follow the rules. Okay? Now, we can solve this by getting rid of the y's on the right side. Or we can solve it by getting rid of the y's on the left side. What do you think? Maya, what do you want to do? Or not Maya, Molina? On the left side. All right, let's get rid of the y's on the left side. So you add negative three y's. And now we've gotten rid of these. And what do we have left? Negative 20. Now, cardinal rule, whenever you add to one side, you have to add to the other side. So add negative 3y's to the right side. Five y equals negative twenty. Does this one look familiar? No. We just solved five y equals negative twenty, didn't we? Five by five. And negative four equals y. Now, something important. When you're solving an equation and the y's are on the right side, write your solution the same way. So keep the y's on the right side when you're writing your solution. Don't rewrite it so it says y equals negative four. Okay? And the reason for that is that in the next lesson, starting tomorrow, we're going to be solving inequalities, where the sides are greater than or less than. And so if the y's are on the right side of an inequality, they have to stay on the right side of an inequality. OK? We can't just write it the other way without following a procedure. Danny? Uh, let's see. It just says solve these, so we're not going to check them. Okay. Number four. X minus seven equals two X minus six. So we have x terms on both sides, and we have numbers on both sides. How do you want to start this, Andrew? So you have to decide what do you want to get rid of on the left side. You want to get rid of the x's on the left side? Yes. Good. Okay. How do we do that? Subtract. Add. Now, what would be in front of this x? A 1. So we would add negative 1x. One. One Very good. And we still have the negative 7. And then what do we have to do to the right side? What's the most important rule in solving equations? If you do something on the left side, do it on the right. You have to do the same thing on the right side. So we have to. Uh, yeah, you have to add the exact same thing.
So we still have the negative 6, and this is what we have left in our equation. So negative 7 equals 1x plus negative 6. Now what? Okay, add negative 6 to both sides, or add 6 to both sides, I mean. <coughs> So 1 equals 1x. If 1x equals 1, then then x equals 1. Yeah. What is that? said, so positive 1 should be negative 1. Oh, you're right. So negative 1 equals 1x. So x equals negative 1. Yep. Actually, the x is on the right side. So as I just said, we should write this as negative 1 equals x. Keeping the variable on the side that it's left on. Okay. Any questions on these? All right, we need to skip down to number, let's see, number nine. Number nine is written differently. Q plus Q plus Q equals Q plus six. Yeah, get rid of this one. So add 